Hello students, hope you all did well with the exam. The question paper was a very easy one compared to your previous year paper. So let us begin. It was on the whole a 70 mark paper. Time given was three hours. Question paper was divided into section A consisting of seven questions, two marks each, all questions were compulsory and answers had to be given in a very brief language only containing two marks. Section B, you had to attempt only three questions out of the five questions given. Numericals each were from your five units. Section C consisted of again choice seven marks each. So let us begin. First, section A, two marks each. Explain basic postulate of Planck's law of radiation. So, Planck's theory states that energy can exist in discrete or quantized amounts rather than a continuous range and it occurs in bundles or packets of energy. Physical significance of pointing theorem, we all know that pointing theorem is basically giving us the status of energy in an electromagnetic field and it is a quantity that is describing the magnitude and direction of flow and pointing vector is given by s is equal to e cross h where e is electric field intensity and h is magnetic field intensity what happens if the slit is smaller than wavelength in diffraction pattern when the slit becomes wide more light will enter from the mid portion of the slit, which is very less diffracted. Hence, fringes are going to overlap and they will become less differentiable. And if the slits become narrower, the number of light will decrease and the fringes will become fainter and more differentiable from each other. So what is metastable state? Metastable state is a very necessary condition for laser action to occur. On this state, the excitation energy is raised and the excited electrons stay there for a longer period of time that is 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds compared to the usual time of 10 to the power of minus 8 seconds. What is vortex state of a superconductivity? This has been defined in detail in this very solution in your section C uh, question. Vortex occurs in type 2 superconductors. And when the magnetic field starts to penetrate the materials in the form of a quantized flux, the vortices interact with each other and they can form different phases under the influence of magnetic field. It does not happen in type 1. What do you mean by scattering losses in optical fiber? Scattering losses occur when a wave interacts with a particle in a way that it removes the energy in the directional, propagating the wave and transfers it in all other directions. Scattering is a very major loss of optical fiber. Quantum confinement effect in nanomaterials. Quantum confinement is the spatial confinement of electron hole pairs in one or more dimensions within a material and also electronic energy levels are discrete. 1D quantum confinement is your quantum well, 2D is quantum wire, 3D is quantum dots. Now the numericals. You had to attempt any three, seven mark each. Calculate Compton shift and kinetic energy of recoil of electron if X-rays of wavelength one angstrom are scattered from a carbon block. Now, Compton effect formula, del lambda is equal to H upon M naught C into 1 minus cos phi. Lambda here is given as one angstrom. Angle is 90 degrees, so cos 90 degree becomes zero. Planck's constant and velocity of light and m naught. Putting these values here, we get del lambda equal to 0.243 angstrom. Kinetic energy imparted to the recoil electron is equal to decrease in energy of the 
photon. So kinetic energy formula, we keep all these values here, lambda dash this, and this we answer getting in joules. If you want to convert it into electron volt, you can do that, but you will get full marks. Either you leave it as joule or electron volt as far as the values are correct. Next question, pointing theorem. Very, it was given in the model paper also. Every year it is asked, very simple question. You have been given the total energy and you have to find the values of electric and magnetic field radiation at a distance of two meter from the lamp. So from the pointing, this two meter will become radius and the energy flux per unit area will be equal to power upon area. Now for a circle, it becomes four pi r square and r here will be two meter. Pointing theorem, S is equal to E cross H, which is equal to E H sine theta because that is the angle between E and H. So we get E H is equal to 1000 upon four pi r square and E upon H is equal to 377 or 376.72. Then you can solve these two equations by multiplying one will value. You will get the value here of E and then you put this value there and you get the value of H. For amplitudes, E naught is equal to E into under root 2. H naught is equal to H into under root 2. Newton's rings are observed normally in reflected light of wavelength 6000 angstrom. Diameter of the 10th dark ring is 0.5. Radius of curvature of the lens and thickness is this much. See, dn square is equal to 4n lambda r. If you write the formula, you will get your one mark. If you uni uh, uniform the units like CGS, MKS, or like in this case, it is angstrom. So all the distance units are being changed into centimeters. You can do it into meter also, no problem. Then you put the values, you get the answer. And for thickness of the thin film, two things they are asking, radius of curvature and thickness of the thin film. So this value you put 2t is equal to t square upon 4r. So t is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeters. Next numerical, diffraction pattern of a single slit of wavelength 0.5 centimeter is found by a lens of focal length this much. You have to calculate the distance between the first and the next bright fringe from the axis. So for a single slit, the direction of the nth minima is given by a sine theta is equal to n lambda. So sine theta is n lambda upon a. For very small values of theta, we can approximate sine theta to theta and we become this equation becomes theta is n lambda upon a. Now, if d is distance of screen from the slit and x is distance of center of second by dark band from middle of the central band, then in this case, in our numerical, see, we will take this distance d approximately equal to focal length of the given lens. Yes, because the value is less. So we, will, we can approximate it to f and theta becomes equal to x upon f. Both these equations of theta when we compare and for first order n equal to 1, the expression becomes x is equal to lambda f upon a. So this is exactly how we are going to do for the next uh, fringe. So you can see it. You can show in your exam even for the first step. Now you quickly put the values you have been given lambda is 4890 angstrom you have been given f as 40 centimeter change it all units change them into meter a is 0.5 centimeter you change that also into meter so you get the value of x1 now for maxima for maxima, again, A sine theta is equal to 2N plus 1 lambda by 2. N is equal to 1. So this is this. Sine theta tends to this. So this is theta and X theta is X2 upon F. Quickly put all the values as centimeter or meter, whatever you feel convenient. Then you have to find the distance between the first and the next bright frame. So just subtract X2 minus X1.
and you get the answer. Calculate the V number for a fiber of pore diameter 40 micrometer and re refractive indexes are 1.55 and 1.5. So refractive index has been given, diameter has been given. You have to change it. Micrometer is 10 to the power of minus 6 meter and lambda 1400 uh, nanometer. So 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. So for showing all these steps, you will get two marks. Then you just write down the formula. V is pi d upon lambda into under root n1 square minus n2 square. Put the values and you get the answer. Number of modes that the fiber can support is equal to V square upon Two. So around 612 modes this fiber can support. Next are the lengthy questions. Seven marks each. Again, the marking scheme will be step by step. You have to distinguish between phase velocity and group velocity of a wave packet and establish a relation between them. For these lengthy questions, you can refer to my playlists where AKTU BTEC first year for engineering physics, you will get step by step detailed solution. Here I am showing you just uh, uh, what the answer is going to be. Like you have to find relation between group velocity and phase velocity. So that comes equal to C square. Simple with uh, this D Broglie wavelength and E equal to H mu and E equal to MC square. We get it. Eigenvalue and eigenfunction of a particle in one dimensional box for drawing this diagram and showing that potential inside the well will be zero. Outside, there is no chance of finding the particle and explaining it. You can easily fetch one to one and a half marks. You can show and then Schrodinger equation has to be used. Putting the conditions for Schrodinger equation, another one and a half or two marks. You get marks for step by step explanation. And then the simple formula for eigenvalues and uh, we are getting for the different energy levels. All this has been already explained in the playlists and also in the textbook. And then you can just write down and this is how you can show the path of particle in the one dimensional well. Maxwell's fourth equation, why was it modified? And then they have just given a very simple that when an ideal capacitor is charged by a DC battery, DC means direct current. Ideal capacitor, what will be the resistance? And they are saying that no current is going to flow. That means resistance should be infinite. And when an uh, AC source is used, the current is flowing continuously. That means varying fields have come into effect. That is the reason why Maxwell's fourth equation was modified to include time varying fields. This is exactly how you have to explain this answer. See, this is, you don't need to show the derivation, but I am just trying to show you that when uh, the simple ampere circuital law was there, it was not consisting of the varying time varying fields. So this change was included in Maxwell's fourth equation, which included the time varying fields curl H is equal to J plus JD. That means where JD is forming current density because of displacement currents. So displacement currents were added to the simple ampere circuit law and Maxwell's fourth equation came into being. Exactly this is what they have given that for ideal capacitor resistance will be infinite. When you, you will use an AC source, the current is going to flow continuously and uh, circuit in real capacitor charging is going to take place due to varying electric fields and this current will be given by displacement current. That is all. You don't need to derive the whole Maxwell's fourth equation. Just explain that it is giving an addition to ampere circuital law and including time varying fields. Next, pointing theorem, the numerical is also there in the paper for this. You have to derive the pointing theorem and give the physical significance. So again, this is pointing vector. And how will you start the derivation? You will write your Maxwell's four, four equations. Then you will multiply one by H, the other by E, subtract both of them and include values of Maxwell's equations in this expression here. And you can see that here, 
here the rate of transfer of energy into electromagnetic field due to motion of charges has been included. This is representing energy due to electric and magnetic fields. This is giving the pointing vector and this term is giving the rate of transfer of energy due to motion of charges. That is all. Discuss the phenomena of interference in thin films and show that they are complementary. So this diagram, two to two and a half marks, where you can see this is a thin film. A upper surface is getting reflected. Some is getting reflected from the lower surface. And then simple, very simple path difference formula for how much the light traveled in film, how much it traveled in air, subtract, put values of sine and cos theta in the expression, and simple, very simple. You can just put the path difference formula. Now it is saying that you have to show that it is complementary for reflected and transmitted light. Yes, that is absolutely true. Don't derive whole of uh, transmitted. You can just, you don't need to derive this full expression of transmitted with one reflected and now condition of maxima minima. Here you exaggerate the answer. That C, for constructive or maxima, what is the path difference? And for minima, what is the path difference? And the appears bright in reflected light that will appear dark in transmitted and vice versa. So they are complementary to each other. Fraunhofer diffraction of single slit and this expression of intensity, your diagram will give you good three marks. If it is well explained diagram with slit, both the lenses, etc. And then simple slit width formula, phase difference, put the values here. This expression of resultant intensity, what happens when n number of rays are refracted? For small values, you can approximate sine theta to theta. Put these values there in the expression and get the expression for resultant intensity. Open the inside terms of sine series and maxima minima values. You can easily put here with the secondary maxima and minima. The plot for y equal to alpha and y equal to tan alpha at the points where this plot is cutting, these numerical values will give you the series. See here, a square upon 22, that is this, so 4 upon 9, 5 square. When you solve this, it comes equal to 1 upon 22 a square, 1 upon 62 a square. Even if this series you are writing, it is no problem because pi is 3.14. When you solve it further, answer is same. So it is not an issue. You can just simply show that they have only put the numerical value of pi. Acceptance angle and acceptance coal of an optical fiber. You will have to draw the diagram. You will have to show core cladding, the covering of this, and then acceptance angle and acceptance cone. These few steps you will have to show how, what is acceptance angle and acceptance cone, because with this question, they are not giving any condition. Need diagram of helium neon laser. How is it superior to ruby laser? So helium neon laser is a gaseous laser. It is very light. It gives a continuous output. It is uh, um, a very light to carry, easy to maintain, and gives a very nice, highly monochromatic uh, output. It doesn't require a cooling system, whereas ruby laser requires one cooling system. So these are few advantages of helium neon laser. Then difference between type one and type two. Here in the diagram of type two, I have shown vortex state. See, type one are simple superconductors, whereas type two are the mixed ones. Type one can return back to their original state, whereas type two don't here. See, mixed state, complete, uh, di completely diamagnetic, normal. These are the type two. And examples of type two are alloys or combinations, whereas type ones are uh, simple ones. See, the superconductor is said to be in a mixed or vortex state. This was asked in section A. So even if you got confused, you could have shown it with the diagram. Mixed state, 
till here it is type 1 then it becomes type 2 and type 2 have more advantages compared to type 1. Now this question what is the purpose of nanoscience? Very easy. Nanoscience is the study of structures and materials on a very small scale. Nanometer is one billionth of a meter. So the physical and chemical properties of matter change at nano level and nanotechnology can have the potential to revolutionize a diverse range of fields from healthcare to manufacturing even if you have mentioned that it is important and it is the structure on a very small scale you can fetch marks they are saying discuss any one method either the sol gel or the chemical vapor deposition technique for synthesis of nano materials so simple diagram and a very simple explanation because it is a seven mark question and one or two advantages of the same and chemical vapor deposition technique where you are doing the coating process through chemical vapor. So the diagram will carry more significance in these lengthy questions and their labeling and a few advantages. Thank you.